The doctor is in. Salutations, friends. This is your pal again, Dr. Sal. And in today's episode of Dr. Secrets, we look at fluticasone, also known as Flovent by its trade name. It typically comes in an orange looking um, plastic container and it's used as a preventative medication for asthma conditions. It's also sometimes used in COPD as well. So, in this study of side effects that are potential spin-offs from Flovin or fluticasone. Uh, we look at a study that analyzed 366 users over the course of a year. Now on to the side effects. Okay, so the four most common side effects while taking Flovin. Number one was hoarseness or what we call medically dysphonia. Sound like you need a throat lozenge after using it, that was about 7% of cases. The next one was oral thrush, that was 6% of cases. Asthma was 6% of cases, and that might seem a little strange, but we'll get back to that. And then sore throats were seen in about 4% of cases. Now, like I said, it seems a little odd that you're taking a medication to reduce asthma, but yet it seems like it actually could promote it in some unfortunate circumstances. But if you notice here, all of the side effects all come down to irritation of the airway. So if you have more irritation of the airway and somebody who's unfortunate, well, that's also going to stimulate more asthma in that individual. Now, I used to believe that the reason for these airway disorders as a consequence of the fluticasone is that the active ingredient fluticasone is a corticosteroid, which means it's an immunosuppressant. So I used to believe, for example, that thrush caused by candida was because you're applying an anti-inflammatory to the lining of the throat. Well, and traditionally, they always used to tell you to gargle after taking your inhaler with water to try to wash the chemicals off to reduce the likelihood of sustaining these uh, side effects. However, there's something interesting if you look at another variant of fluticasone. These... Uh, Numbers quoted here are for the propellant version, the one that looks like this, that has an aerosol that pushes the chemical out and assists you in delivering into the lungs as you breathe in. But there's another variation called a discus. And with the disc, the disc does not have a propellant in it. It just has the chemical in a dry powder, and then it relies on your inspiratory effort when you suck in to pull the chemical down into your lungs. And that one looks quite different from this one. That's more of a circle. It literally looks like a disc. And one, one side has an opening where you put your mouth on to inhale the, the powder through. Now, if you look at the side effect profile for the disc versus the pump, uh, something strange occurs. So with that one, the incidence of hoarseness was 1.5%. Of users. Oh, and by the way, this study with the discus, this was 443 people. So n equals 443. So dramatically less hoarseness. Also for thrush, less than 1%. For asthma, 1%. For sore throat, less than 1%. So what is going on here? So it turns out it's not the fluticasone that's causing this airway irritation, it's actually the propellant in the puffer inside of the pumps. So if you're on a pump and you're, you notice that since you started it, you're actually getting more asthma than before you, you began it, you might want to talk to your doctor about this effect because the simple solution is actually not to increase the dose or take more. You may actually need to switch from the pump to the disc. Two other little uh, words of wisdom. One is that many people, myself included, um, before I started med school, I also had asthma. I still do, but not as bad as when I was a kid. But many people stop taking it because when you take it, it feels like it's done absolutely nothing. The reason for that is it's not meant as a treatment for asthma. It's meant as a preventative for asthma. So it's not a rescue puffer. It takes hours for its onset of action. But if you do take it religiously, then it gives you sustained relief. And you can see this if you actually... Um, 
plot a diary of your symptomatology, how often you get attacks and how often you have to rely then on your uh, rescue or blue pump or Ventolin or Oxys or whatever you're on. So with the Flovent, one of the tricks with it is you have to take it and have faith that it's actually exhibiting, exerting an effect. If you take it um, as prescribed, which is usually two inhalations twice a day, you should get a lot less uh, subsequent asthma attacks that, that require um, taking your rescue puffer. So that's one of the big tr tricks about it. And uh, I mean, that fooled me when I was younger too. The second uh, piece of wisdom I'd like to pass on to you is a lot of people, especially parents, are often concerned about putting kids on it less often themselves, but they're usually worried about putting their children on it because when they understand that fluticasone is actually a glucocorticoid steroid, they immediately start thinking of horrible specters like Cushing's d disease, um, weight gain, um, loss in bone density. But I'll show you quickly why this is very unlikely to occur. Oops, density. Now the reason for that is that the dose is so minuscule. Um, looking at the pharmacokinetics of it, uh, only about 7.8 to maybe about 10.9% is absorbed into the bloodstream from the lungs, from the alveoli. So if we round that off to that the expected amount you're gonna absorb into your bloodstream is about 10%, well then when you consider that two puffs twice a day works out to 500 micrograms because the pumps are usually 125 uh, micrograms for an adult 50 micrograms for a kid so you've got 500 um, micrograms which is equivalent to 0 0.5 milligrams and then on top of that you're only getting 10 percent of that into your bloodstream whoops sorry you can't see that there 0 0.5 milligrams and you're only getting 10 percent of that into your bloodstream. So you're looking at a systemic load of only 0.05 milligrams. Now, when we take it orally as prednisone, uh, typically for an asthma exacerbation, you'd be using something like 50 milligrams of prednisone. So you're looking at a pound for pound differential of like a hundred times different. So that's why when you take oral prednisone, you get these spectacular and unpleasant side effects. But that is completely implausible when you're taking the puffer. So you can rest assured it's not going to cause things like growth retardation in your kids or any of these other um, mischief. And in fact, I've been using uh, both prednisone and fluticasone since I was a small child because uh, I had bad asthma. I've been admitted to hospital two or three times. And um, I'm six feet tall, so it didn't affect my growth one way or the other. So you should feel reassured um, if you have to take fluticasone or give it to your kids. It works quite well, and it's a useful weapon in our arsenal against asthma attacks. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is side effects of Flovent in a nutshell. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll be back again soon. Thanks for watching. Get notified of new videos. Subscribe now. If you found this video helpful, support us by sharing it with all of your friends and throw us a like below. You're a star. Cheers and cheerio.